about, for those who know the Lord, there's two categories. There's the cooperators, and then there are the uncooperators. And um, our theme today is this. Uh, well, let's look at 1 Corinthians 15, and let's read this together. All right? You see it there, 1 Corinthians 15, 10? Yeah. Okay, let's read it together. <coughs> but by the grace of God, I am what I am. And his grace toward me was not in vain, but I labored more abundantly than they all. Yet not I, but the grace of God which was with me. And then let's read that, that the, uh, the uh, Passion Translation. But God's amazing grace made me who I am. And his grace to me was not fruitless. The heartbeat of what I'm trying to say today, the theme is this. God's grace is to be received for gain, not in vain. It's to be received for gain. Make a difference in our life and then through our life, not to be in vain for nothing. And Paul here says that the grace of God that God gave to him, it was not in vain. That tells me, and we'll look at another verse in a moment, that it's possible for somebody to receive Christ and have their names written in heaven, but then the rest of their Christian experience is sort of in vain. It's, it's not being fruitful and useful the way that God ordained it to be. Uh, let's read 1 Corinthians chapter 6. Um, and let me make reference to a verse that Carmen mentioned earlier in 2 Timothy chapter 3. It says, all scripture is given to us to instruct us, to warn us, okay, to correct us. So when we, re we read the scriptures to edify us, but part of that edif edification is to is say, hey, sometimes you need to wake up. How many of you have read something in the scripture and you go, whoa. Oh, yeah. You know, I know one of my woe scriptures is in uh, 1 John. It says, if you say that you love God, but you don't love your brothers and sisters who you can see, it says, nah, it ain't working. You know, that's not real, real love, real faith. So that, that verse always uh, challenges me. But let's read 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 6. Actually, I think it's 2 Corinthians. That's a mistake there. 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 1. Let's read it. We then, as workers together with him, so we leave with you not to receive the grace of God in vain. In the, trans the, in the Passion Translation, we beg you not to take God's marvelous grace for granted, allowing it to have no effect in your life. We'll stop right there for a moment. So you see, Paul, as a spiritual father, he is saying to those who know Christ, he is saying, listen, I'm urging you, I'm pleading with you, I'm begging with you. This grace that you have received, let it not be in vain. Let it not be without purpose. Let it not be uh, fruitless in your life. He's pleading with them. Uh, you know, as a spiritual father, you know, in the other versions put it this way. Um, we urge you not to receive his grace and then do nothing with it. Uh, do not let his grace be wasted on you. Please don't squander one bit of this marvelous life God has given us. We ask you from all of our hearts not to receive God's loving favor and then waste it. So you see, it's possible. Please hear Paul's heart and my heart also as a pastor. It's possible for somebody to know God, but then in, in, in good part that the grace of God is in vain in their lives because it's not producing what God put it there for. Let me use the example of baseball here. All right? Um, you know, obviously... Baseball, you want to step to the bat, you want to swing, you want to hit singles, doubles, and all that. But there, there, there's, there's some Christians, some Christians who are just in the dugout. They're in the dugout, and they're watching the game, they're watching the game, and maybe once in a great while, they'll come out, and they'll, uh, you know, they'll step up to the bat, and maybe something will happen, but then, whoop, you know, back to the dugout. Back to the dugout. Okay, this is, this is if you're a dugout Christian, then you will basically are receiving the grace of God in vain because God has so much more for you to do in you, to transform you into the beautiful image of Christ and, and, and to use you to make a difference, to be an agent of change in this world. 
You know, some people say uh, the verse, oh, we are his ambassadors. And they say, oh, that's just for Paul and the pastors. I tell you what, that's what, lie from the pit of hell. Because the job of the pastors, the apostles, and all of those is what? To equip God's people for the work of the ministry. I'm going to put somebody on the spot here in just a minute. So get ready, Amy. All right? Cookie was part of this picture. And Cynthia was part of this picture. And Carmen was part of this picture. Recently, in June, it was... Uh, Cookie's uh, birthday, so they decided to take her out to Olive Garden. All right. Now, while they're at Olive Garden, something happened there that Amy told me, and I went, as a pastor, I'm, oh, yes, oh, yes. Come on, tell it. Come on. Yeah. Come on. Uh -huh. Well, well I've been whipping. Yeah, if you're up here, you can take the mask off. Just for fun. We've been long more, long more. several times to, to restaurants. Long and long I, well, like maybe two or three times to to restaurants. It's okay. Do you understand me? Yeah. And when we go to the restaurants, I always make, take a look at Corey and he, maybe he hands out something and he asks if he could pray for the person who's been serving us to the table. So for some reason, the lady that was serving us, she had a, some trouble with the invoice for the check. The check. The check. <laughs> so she came to the table and she looked very anxious and I asked her if we could pray for her. I asked her if she knew Jesus. Yes. And she, she nodded her head and, and asked her if we could pray for her. And as soon as I started praying for her, she started crying like she needed to, to listen to the words that I was saying and it wasn't something like I bet it was the Holy Spirit prompting me to pray for her. And just because I've seen it from my pastor, I've seen a good example, I kept on doing it, and it, just, it was a blessing for her. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Praise the Lord. So would you say on that day that Amy and the girls got out of the dugout? Yep. Yeah, they were in the game. You see, the bat represents this. The bat represents the grace that God has given you. It represents his love accepting you. It represents truth that has made a difference in your life. It represents uh, all the possibilities, all the uh, the good works that he has prepared for each one of you to do. His it power. His power. What's that? His power. Yeah, his power. His doom is power. <clears throat> yeah. yeah. And so uh, it represents all of that. But Paul said, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. And all that is possibility if you just step up to the plate. Now, sure, you'll strike out a lot. I think Babe Ruth, who got most home runs, uh, he also struck out the most. But hey, if you're going to hit singles, doubles, uh, grand slams, triples, you got to do some swinging. Sure, you may get up there. But, but I tell you what, you'll get some hits. And you'll get on base and you'll score some runs. And that's a lot better. Listen, I've been in this. I'm 70 years young right now, and I've observed it. You know, and there are there are the there are the you know as we're saying here, there are what's my title? There are the cooperators. Those I see them. You know, cooperating, trying to do their best for God. And then there's the young cooperators who more or less are spectators. Oh, they get out there once in a while. And I'm challenging each one of us in the name of the Lord. Let's. Let's not be dug outers, but let's be on the playing field. Let's be engaged with what God wants to do oh, in us and wants to do through us. God forbid, uh, you know, one of my one of, part of my job description, my, my privilege, my honor in Colossians chapter 1, verse 28, Paul says this. It says, Him, meaning Jesus, Jesus, we preach, warning every man, teaching every man. Okay, with all wisdom, so that we may present every man and woman mature in Christ, fully developed in Christ. And that's my, that's my job, you know, and that's a privilege. You know, and I'm, I'm here to challenge you, each one of us, because I don't want to, you know, get the end of the day and say, and the Lord says, well, give an account for that one. I go, oh, Lord, I wish I could better account. No, I want to give an account, and I'm on the sidelines. Go, woo, woo, woo. Look at the way you did in his life and, and through her life, oh God. Are, are you with me? Yes. You know, yes, Amen. yes, yes. Oh boy. Yes. So turn to somebody and say, no more dugouts. No more dugouts. I'm on. I'm in. I'm in. Uh, 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 uh. Hit a home run. Yes. Yeah, turn to somebody. Hit a home run. Hit a home run. Get on base. All right. Now, if you'll note here, 
Um, uh, the, the note, if you look there, it says, according to different Bible dictionaries, the word vain is defined as useless, conceited, empty, to no end, nothingness, unreliability, worthless, idle, hollow, fruitless, futile, unprofitable. So it's possible to have a conversion experience with the Lord, and yet the rest of your life more or less is in vain. And that is not God's will for you. You want to know what God's will for you is? God's will for you is that you are in the game and that your life is making a difference, that God is transforming you so much so that other people will say, wow, what's going on with you, man? You're, there's something different about you. You're, you're changing, you know? Woo, I saw that. <laughs> All righty, absolutely. Okay, um, we're going to look right now at the famous last words of Peter in just a moment. Um, you know, the last words of a, of, a, of a famous person are significant. Obviously, uh, how many of you know what Joshua's last words were? As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. And the last words of Jesus were on the cross, but uh, before that last week, if you want to find out what was really, really important to Jesus, you read John 13, 14, 15, 16, and 17. It's all about the Holy Spirit. He's basically telling us, you're going to need the Holy Spirit. You need to be a partnership with the Holy Spirit. Amen. Ooh, yes, Holy Amen. Spirit. Holy Spirit. <laughs> and so, um, and then, but look at some famous last words. Frank Sinatra, the last words he said was this, I'm losing it. Okay? John Wayne died at age 72 in Los Angeles. He turned to his wife and he said this, of course I know who you are. You're my girl. I love you. Those are some pretty cool last words, aren't they? Okay, there was a man named Thomas B. Uh, Moran, and he was a pickpocket. And he was known by the name Butterfingers. And he reported they sold as many as 50,000 wallets in his lifetime. He was good. <laughs> <laughs> and he died in 1971. And uh, his last words were this. I've never forgotten that smart, alecky reporter who gave me the name Butterfingers. To me, that's not funny. <laughs> Those were his last words. Okay, uh, two more. Convicted murderer James Rogers was put in front of a firing squad in Utah and asked if he had a last request. And he replied this, bring me a bulletproof vest. Those were his last words, you know. But then I like this one. Writer T.S. Eliot was able only to whisper one word as he died. Valerie, the name of his wife. You know, if I were on my death, I think the two names that I would be mentioning would be Jesus and also Carmen. Aww. T.S. Eliot was from the mission. You're right, Francisco. I'll be going home later. <laughs> <laughs> But let's look at Peter's last words. Uh, why don't you read it with me? Second Peter chapter 3. But grow, but grow in, the in the grace, grace and knowledge of our, our Lord and Savior, Savior Jesus Christ. Christ. Now I say these are his last words because uh, earlier in, in Second Peter, he says this. I know I'm about to die. And some of you know that according to church tradition, he was crucified, but he did not consider himself worthy to be crucified in the manner that Jesus was. He was crucified feet up, head down, you know, but he knew. So these are really, these are the, literally the last words of Peter. This is 2 Peter chapter 3, the last verse in his second epistle. And he says, grow in the grace of Jesus. Let's see what the, the Passion Translation says. Come on. Continue but continue to grow, to grow and increase, increase God's, in God's grace and intimacy with our Lord and Savior. Savior. Amen. Remember what Paul said. He says, His grace bestowed upon me was not in vain. In other words, it had an impact. And just very quickly, each one of these is worthy of a full message in and of itself. But one area to grow in grace is to grow in Christ-like character. Therefore, as the elect of God, holy and beloved, put on tender mercies, kindness, humility, meekness, 
long suffering, bearing with one another, I mean putting up with one another, and forgiving one another. You see, when we put that on as Christians, and when we grow in those character qualities, guess what? We are growing in grace. Amen. Okay? Next category where we can grow is in life giving conversation. A lot of us can quote this. Um, I think it was the, the philosopher, I think it was Publius, who said, I've often regretted my speech, but never my silence. How many of you can agree with that? Mm -hmm. you, know, you said something, oh, I wish I wouldn't have said that. You know? but, uh, but anyway, uh, Paul put it this way. Let no unkind, let no corrupt, let no mean, let no nasty words come out of your mouth. But let words come out of your mouth that build up, that edify, that impart grace and hope and life to people. And so in our journey, you know, if we're going to truly be people out of the dugout, we're going to learn to grow in Christ-like speech. We're going to, in speech that, that ministers life. And Mark Johnson, we're here. What verse would he quote? Proverbs. 1821. That's it. Yeah, death and life are in the power of the tongue. All right. And the third thing, which I will, on another message, maybe next week or the following week, whenever, I will expound more on this one, but grow in good works. Because as a, as a child of God, the scripture says this, for you are his workmanship. You are his poemia. You are his work of art created in Christ Jesus for good works that God has prepared ahead of hand for you to walk in. I look at Blake over here who has his place on Louisa Street. Go and give him some, some business there. But uh, I know he told me, you know, the, the, the daily breads and stuff like that. He's put it, he's put it there. And uh, by the end of the night, sometimes those things are gone. People pick them up, you know. So he's using uh, his place of business, all right, to, to plant seeds there. You know, and I Amen. think that's a good work that God's given you to do. Amen. You know, Amen. and that's beautiful. And I mean, I want to thank Invisible <coughs> here because uh, he's recording this, and it's uh, it's going to different places in the states, different places in the world, and so uh, that's using a gift and ability that God has given Yay. you. Mm -hmm. And by the way, uh, he mentioned uh, that he he and Amy want to be water baptized very 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 soon. So if you um, I would say, need to be water baptized, uh, please see us and we can include you in on that. All right? Praise the Lord. All right. So, um, the cooperators versus the uncooperators. God's grace is given for gain, not for in vain. You know, and I don't know where you at. I know where some of you are at. You know, uh, I believe you're on the playing field. But you know, maybe you're one of these guys or gals that you know, you're over here. And once in a while you jump out there, but but mainly over here, and there isn't a whole lot of real transformation. Let me ask you a real solid question: Are you more like Jesus now than you were three months or six months ago? If the answer to that is yes, I bless you in the name of the Lord. If the answer you go. Ah, really don't know. Listen, get out of the dugout. Get in the game of life. Get engaged with God and say, Lord, these, you know, who you really are is who you are in the dark. When other people don't see you. That's who you really are. <clears throat> and if that person who's in the dark, you get with God and get real with God. I remember Charles Simpson who started Integrity Music, um, um, which was the predecessor of Hillsong and all the others there. Uh, but he, he, told, he, he told the story, I think it was of himself, that uh, he used to like to, to love to smoke cigars, but he was convicted you know, that for him it wasn't the thing, but he just smoked these cigars, smoked these cigars and all that. God, you know, I don't want to do that anymore. And then one God, God spoke to him and says, he says, you're lying. He says, you love those things. You know, and then when he got to the reality of it, that that thing which was for him was sin, he said, "God, you're right. You know, please. You know." So there may be stuff happening in your life. Maybe the world says uh, that's okay, but there's some things that we know that we know that we know are not right, and there's some things that the Holy Spirit will put His finger on and say, 
You know, the Bible says the Holy Spirit is this. It's the finger of God, you know. And so uh, if you're here today and you, if, you, if you're listening to me, and first of all, uh, if you're in the category that you've never asked Christ to come into your heart and into your life and say, Lord, please come into my heart. Lord, I need you as my Messiah, as my Savior to wash you clean. You know, we're going to give you opportunity for that in a moment. But also, if you're here today, and you've been uh, cooperating with the grace of God, and many of you have. I mean, these two people right here, I've used them as illustrations before. But living up in the mountains where leaking roof and electricity without 220 days, plus recently, you know, and they've, been, they've called lots and lots of people to fix the roof. Nobody wants to fix it so far and all of that. And they could be having a world-class pity party, you know. But no, they're, they're laughing, they're sort of laughing through it. And they're, they're thanking God through it. They're praying God through it. And I, and I mean, they, they inspired me, you know. It, it inspires me not to, uh, not to mumble or grumble, but to be thankful and to praise, you know. And so um, I guess the challenge and the, and so those of you who are in the game, I commend you. And I bless you. And stay in the game. You know, stay there uh, as one who, who cooperates with the grace of God so that the power of God, the life of God, the, 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 the giftings of God will flow through you to touch the world around you. Jesus says this. He says, the story, he gave talents, abilities to different people. And then he said, at the end of the parable, the scripture says that then he called each one of those people to give an account. Now, you can be sure that God is not going to say to me, I want you to give an account for that great, melodious, rhythm voice that you have. <laughs> no! I remember, this is a little memory, I was, I was 8 or 10 years old, and we had a mirror sort of in our four-year area, and, you know, this was way back when, and Pat Boone was singing some song, Honeycomb or whatever it was, and I was in front of the mirror singing this song, you know, I'm just eight years old or ten years old, and I look around the, the, the corner, you know, around the, the edge behind me. And my mom is looking at this, and she's sort of, you know, in love with mom, or a little smile, or whatever. But yeah, you know, I, I learned actually when I was in college, when I was in the fraternity for a while. You know, we would uh, once in a while. This is BC, BC before Christ. Get a few beers, and we'd go out to the sororities and, uh, and serenade. And the guys, the brothers in the fraternity, they heard me. And this is Corey. Listen. Get in the back and keep your voice down. <laughs> so you see, God's not going to ask me uh, to give an account for that. You know, but there are gifts and abilities that he has given me, given each one of us. That he's going to say, how did you do with what I gave you? Praise the Lord. Let's stand up. Hallelujah. Why don't you put your hand on your heart? Hand on heart. And uh, for those of you who would like to receive Christ for the very first time, just I'm going to say a simple prayer. And, uh, and if it rings true in your heart, you can just repeat it with me. Uh, and you can all repeat it if you want with me. Um, uh, Lord, I need you. I know I'm not perfect. I've messed up quite a bit. Done my thing. Sinned against you. And I ask for forgiveness. I thank you, Jesus, that you died for me. That I might live for you. So I want to turn from all the wrong stuff. And I want to start living for you. I want to start living for you. So I believe that you died for me and rose again. I believe that you died for me and rose again. And I open the door of my heart. And I open the door of my heart. And I receive you into my life. And I receive you into my life. And I confess you. I confess you. And declare you. And declare you. As my Lord and Savior. As my Lord and Savior. Thank you, Jesus. And Father, Thank I pray Jesus. right now for the ones who that individual or two or three, whatever, that may have prayed that for the first time. Seal that in their hearts and in their lives. Or wrap them up in your love, O Lord God. Now for those of us who are already in the category uh, of, this, of, the, uh, of those who have been rescued, we're rescued, we're saved. Keep your hand on your heart and pray with this with me. Um, 
Lord, I want to I want to cooperate with your grace. Forgive me. Forgive me. The times that I have not been too cooperative. The times that I have been not too cooperative. And I change my mind right now. Change my mind right now. And I want to live to be all in with you. I want to live to be all in with you. I don't want to be a cooperator. I want to be a cooperator. Thank you the way you uniquely made me. Thank you the way you uniquely made me. With gifts and talents. With gifts and talents. Thank you for your strength and your spirit in me. Thank you for your strength and your spirit in me. And I ask now for fresh grace. I ask for fresh grace. To cooperate with your grace. To cooperate with your grace. And I receive your grace. I receive your grace. Your empowerment. Your empowerment. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. And Lord, I just seal this word, Lord, in each person here today, in each person who has listened in today, God. We seal this word, Father God, that each one, oh Lord God, will be on the playing field with God, Lord, making a difference in their own lives and the lives of others, oh Lord God. In the mighty name of Jesus. And everybody says... Amen. Amen. Let's give God a glory clap. Come on.